Hey everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens, and today is July 5th, which I think is something like seven weeks after our last frost, which was May 18th. Um, just wanted to give you a progress update. So this bed is doing not a hell of a lot. Um, the cilantro is starting to go to seed. These little balls is what uh, coriander is made from. Um, my basil is also in flower. So I'm hoping with the coriander and the basil, um, they will reseed themselves. And I actually have another batch of cilantro right here to come up. Um, unfortunately, this is still a pretty high sun area, so they're just gonna bolt really soon too. I should really set up a pot. Anyway, uh, not much has changed in that. <clears throat> this <laughs> rescued Roman chamomile is having a grand old time in this tiny pot. Um, the Japanese beetles are here. Gosh darn things. Uh, this base, all of the basil is starting to go to flower and bolt, um, which is okay because then you get more basil. And actually these flower heads are some of the most flavor concentrated of most basils, of most parts of the basil. Um, I have a couple little baby lettuces coming up here. This is, um, buckley red oak leaf lettuce and I am super impressed with how heat tolerant it's been. I mean it's already 80 degrees at I don't know 1030 something like that um, and it hasn't bolted. This is its full size so it's a little bit smaller than I expected but the leaves are really small and you can pick it for um, you know you can pick individual leaves off it for sandwiches or whatever um, or you can do the whole head which is how it's usually sold if you sell it at a market type of thing. So there's that. Um, this is my English or German chamomile, which is just starting to flower. And this is actually a chamomile that allegedly people will have in their lawns, which feels a little bit tall to me, but to each their own. Chocolate mint is finally starting to explode, so I'll be making um, some extract out of that. This is the spearmint. I cut down very vigorously to make some extract and it's coming back nicely. Ginger mint is still hanging in there. I don't love it. I'm not going to baby it. Um, winter savory is taking root nicely. It actually has a couple branches right in here that are indeed rooted. These are just long branches that have rooted, as has this thyme, which was a plant from last year. Um, and I just stuck it in here and there was a long branch, so I stuck it in the dirt and it rooted. A lot of plants you can actually do that. It's called, um, I think it's called air layering. Anyway, this is my now sunflower bed because that was my last okra seedling. And you know, uh, ooh, look at this neat green bee. Love these. Um, I've actually read that sunflowers have some kind of chemical or something that actually inhibits growth of other plants around it which obviously it doesn't apply to lamb's quarters because why would it? Um, but this is the only Florenza that has actually flowered yet. I have, um, this is a separate plant from that one. There's two plants here and then there's only one here and it hasn't done anything yet. Weirdly, Japanese beetles like these. I don't know why, but life goes on. Here's the black star zucchini, which I have started pruning pretty severely to climb upward. So I have another zucchini right back here that I hand pollinated the other day, this little crooked one. This is a male flower. And then there's a few more little baby female flowers that are coming up. So this will keep growing upward. I'm not letting it climb. Radishes, lamb's quarters as usual, which I can't get rid of. And um, this nasturtium is struggling to replant. It's hard being a plant, don't you know? Oh, let me show you this. Good King Henry still hanging on. Um, lemon balm is starting to take off. And this is actually the lemon balm that I seeded eons ago and I finally transplanted out and it's exploding. Lemongrass. And I've lost the other one in all this other crap. This is yarrow. Eh, 
The poor thing's lost into the abyss. I'll have to dig it out later. Anyway, uh, yarrow is still in flower, um, as are the calendula, which will continue to flower throughout the season and reseed itself. This is a spent head and it has seeds coming up as I've shown in videos before. Say hi chickens. These are my babies. They're stupidly big now and I definitely have a rooster in here too. Where is he? There he is right up front here with the huge red comb. We'll see. He's a pretty good bird for um <laughs> he actually chases the little songbirds that fly overhead. So get to take in a good look of these potatoes because they're starting to look pretty ratty, which is good for us. Um, this is the one of the catnip plants. I don't know if I'll harvest that this year or just let it have its fun. Another catnip. This is the mid-season potato, a gold potato. And then these are the russets, which these plants are massive. We'll see how the crop goes. But like the size of these plants are ridiculous. Those plants alone are probably three feet across in places. Anyway, we'll start at row A as we do. This is the Hungarian semi-hot pepper and the two uh, dark purple opal basil. I just gave this thing um, a pretty good juice of potassium because it was dropping flowers and I had that problem last year too or it might be too dry, I don't know. Um, carrots are all out, so the leeks are in free range. These are my Red Bull onions under all this, under all these weeds here. Some of them are really nice and well bulbed out. Where's one of the big ones? There's one. Maybe I planted some of them too deep, but we'll see. I think they're starting to actually, um, I can't remember the term for onions, but in, soft neck garlic it's called lodging when they start falling over and their necks are softening up um, and then here onward are the shallots which are looking amazing again these are shallots that are actually a mix of shallot and onion so they're meant to be a really big long single bulb this is the arugula still in flower months and months later um, and actually brassicas produce these little seed pods. Um, a lot of people like to eat the radish ones. Um, but I think all brassicas put off the seed pods and some people like to eat them in stir fries and things. I haven't bothered. Um, and actually the rest of row A is empty. I'm going to be starting to prep this for transplanting. I've actually decided to put the Brussels sprouts in this row because this is the row that's ready first. <laughs> So um, we'll just go down this end and then turn around. <sighs> weeds and weeds and weeds. Here are my Juanita onions. Um, this one I think is a good example of starting to lodge. So um, it itself is flopping sideways or it's just the way it's growing one or the other. These have bulbed up, bulbed up so nicely. They look so good. So um, hopefully these will be ready to harvest in a couple of weeks. I pull one every once in a while, one of the smaller ones every once in a while to give the bigger ones room to bulb. Um, and yeah, let's give you a peek of my cabbages. I have to have them covered because of the heat because otherwise they'll just bolt like the bok choy did. So here's my last tiara. It's probably ready to harvest with all the slug damage. And then this is the red acre. Um, the plants are really big and I guess they are starting to produce a head finally, but it's been probably almost 150 days. So these things have until I pull the onions. And once I pull the onions, whether they're ready or not, I'm tearing the plants out because I need the space for fall planting stuff. Anyway, let's switch to this side make my life easy. So here are the tomatoes. This is San Marzano 1, San Marzano 2, San Marzano 3. This is one of the hugest nasturtiums I've ever had. This is that really pretty red one. I love nasturtiums. This is the um, beefsteak. This was actually the one that originally got um, 
chomped on, I believe, by a chipmunk. And there's a second one behind it, and it's putting off fruit everywhere else. So it's an indeterminate, so it'll it'll keep vining upward and producing flowers like all of these are. These are all indeterminate vining types. So basil, and then um, this is one of the giant Roma, which I got as a freebie. I actually have four plants, but I've only planted three in the ground on purpose. And the other one, it's just rocking out as a freeloader. And it's actually, um, it's actually rooted itself to the ground. The pot's still here. This is the pot, but it's rooted itself and it's just having a grand old time. So these are cool. Um, they're getting there. And then this is the Matt's cherry tomato. Matt's wild cherry tomato, excuse me. Here's that original bunch I showed y'all the other day. And it's climbing and having a grand old time. And here's the leek again. This is the leek I showed y'all the other day. They're having such a good time. If I had a wider row, I would probably start what you're supposed to do with leeks is you're supposed to pile up soil now so that you can get the shanks even longer. You know, the white part that when you buy a leek. Um, so, meh. These are the candy onions I bought as transplants. There's only eight of them. And I think they're gonna be kind of duds. But anyway, um, I finally tore out the spinach that was bolting, cause whatever. Uh, here is the prism, to, uh, prism pepper. It has two little fruits on it and I should really pull the fruit off so the plant can continue to grow, but I'm selfish and I want peppers, so. Marigolds are still getting big, the other variety of marigold. Basil is getting really good. I'm really excited for basil pesto this fall. I have plenty of, plenty of basils. Another orange sun and Vesuvius pepper. As one that is failing to thrive, I've had three of six fail to thrive and I don't know if it's the soil, I don't know if it's, you know, they're all basically in the same condition. There's nothing there's nothing bothering them. But anyway, um, here's the other two failing to th thrive. And then this is going to be a little bit of a struggle to get in there. I may walk along the P row, but um, this is a morning glory. This is one of the dark veined ones. Um, dill going up in flower as they do because it's so hot, like cilantro. Um, nasturtium. There's the... Um, Hannah's Choice Cantaloupe. So it's still alive. Yay. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get anything from these. They're, they were just kind of an impulse buy. And actually, before I go around, let me show you. This is the, this is the spaghetti squash plant. It's getting close to the top. It's getting there. There's probably five or six leads on this. And I think I'm going to cap it at that because otherwise it'll start straining the plant and it'll start taking over everything else. In case this cantaloupe does want to climb, I want to give it room. Um, but let me show you a couple of the squashes. So this is, I think, one of the first that's actually um, was pollinated. So that's the biggest one. There's another one right behind it on the other side. Here's a female fruit on this side. Um, and they all have fruits. There's another one right there. So this plant is going absolute bonkers. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Um, it looks like I've done a little bit of research because I was thinking about trying to like support the hanging fruit because I didn't want it to tear the vine apart. But it looks like these vines are hardy enough to take the weight of the fruit because I'd rather see and have it tear one vine off than kind of reshape the fruit because the shape of the spaghetti squash is one of the best things about it. It's nice to roast for the, um, you know, vermicelli type noodle it has. Um, all of these nasturtiums are probably as big as they're going to get and they're all going absolutely bonkers with flowers. This is my favorite yellow one. But basically, um, once these flowers die off, if I could find a dead one, but apparently not, once these flowers die off, assuming they've been pollinated, they'll actually put out their seed, which are super huge. They look stupidly large. 
Um, but when you take them when they're green, um, you can actually make, you can pickle them in a brine and make um, capers out of them. So that's what I want to do. And then here is one of the um, hullless pumpkins. I think this is naked bear, which I'm pretty sure, there it is, there's the fruit. So this is the naked bear. There's another female flower down there. Um, and it looks like it's starting to climb near the thing, but near the cabbages, I'm not that worried about it. Here's a cosmos plant. And grand old time with this nasturtium that for once is smaller. Um, and here's the watermelon I showed y'all. <laughs> I just can't win with a watermelon. I showed you this picture this morning and this stupid little seedlings died. Oh, that's why. There's a bunch of cucumber beetles eating it. <sighs> God, I hate cucumber beetles. So one of the things that I've been finding is a struggle with uh, these plants is, well, with the, with the watermelon is um, finding a variety that is resistant to, it's not that the cucumber beetle is the problem, it's that cucumbers beetle, cucumber, cucumber beetles spread bacterial wilt, um, and I forget the species name of it, but basically that will kill your plant. It'll look like it's dying of drought or whatever. Um, so when you're buying watermelons, you need to pay attention to them being bacterial resistant. All of these things, all of these things are covered in squash beetles and cucumber beetles. But the only reason they're alive still is because they're resistant to the bacterial wilts and other things they carry. Fun fact. So moving on, here's the other hullless pumpkin. Ooh, here's one of the seeds I can show you on the nasturtium. So this is what they look like. They'll grow in a pair. Where am I? They grow in a pair, single pair, or even triples I've seen. Um, but you can pick them when they're still fully green and pickle them. Last year I did dandelion blossoms and they came out really yummy. Um, this is kai kai or kakai, however you pronounce it. Um, this is the bigger of the two. Oh, there's a bunch of squash beetle eggs. If you've ever seen squash beetle eggs, they're oval, they're hard, and they're allegedly copper colored. But anyway, um, more cosmos more dill and then this is the last squash which is um butternut which i think has had a rough start i have i think about three liters on this right now liters um haven't seen any female flowers yet the, again this thing's trying to catch up i think so here's a liter here's a liter i guess i have four anyway again no flowers on it yet it's still catching up and then this is technically the P row that is now transfer, uh, transforming into the, <laughs> the cucumber row. So this is the one and only um, Pugnete plant, uh, the long slicer cucumber that's made it. And I'm starting to train it up this trellis slowly but surely. You need water, you're floppy. Um, and then this is another variety, <laughs> Leo enough uh this is another long slicer variety that i got called telegraph um again it's just a long slicer and i'm starting to succession plant that um this is probably my slowest growing morning glory right here all the rest are up and vining and then these are the new cucumbers that i got which are called h19 little leaf and they're a pickling type so they're the little short type of cucumber and these are supposed to be really um, prolific and really um, disease resistant so we'll see how they hold up but they're surrounded by the usual nasturtium dill and I don't have any marigolds over here yet and then this is the last stand of Lincoln shelling peas I don't think I'm gonna grow Lincoln again it was okay, but um, for the space I have for it, I want it to climb more. And these are meant to be a bush type. So bush only get, you know, X number of inches tall, something like 30 some inches tall. 
which is nice if you don't have a climbing type and you just have a little piece of fence that you want it to stand on. But anyway, this complete cluster is my two varieties of green beans. So these, this is the biggest slenderette green bean I have. And you can see, if I had enough hands, you can see all these baby green beans coming in and all the flowers in there. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to get pollinated because of how, <laughs> how tightly woven they are. Um, this is the first year I've done bush beans and my program I used to plan my garden told me I can definitely um, plant them six inches apart, but uh, the plants get bigger than I thought. So next year we will not do this. But this is the Slenderette. There's only like five plants. And then these are the green stringless, which are a little behind. They were planted, I think two or three weeks, but they're coming up a lot better than Slenderette was. Again, like watermelon, green beans love the heat. Heat, heat, heat. Um, and then these little things coming up in between the beans are the petunias. Petunias? Petunias. These are allegedly dwarf petunias, so I don't know what size a standard petunia is, but that's just too darn big for me. Okay, and then finishing up with my celeriac, which is my pride and joy this year, and I'm pretty darn thrilled. I think they're looking really good. Um, celeriac for me is this, there's many crops that I'm growing this year that I can buy. And it's just one of those things of, if I can grow up myself, it's just one of those food securities that I'm able to have. I don't need it, but I want it. And it's always good to grow your own food, right? So, um, but for celeriac, celery root, this is actually a crop that's really difficult for me to find that's either not super expensive um, and tiny. I also want to show you this wildflower patch I have, which looks like a rat's nest, but uh, this is what it is. Um, so hopefully that celeriac does well. That's a brilliant variety um, from Territorial. Started in February, and we'll see when it wants to come up. Apparently the root will kind of rise up to the top of the ground, kind of like the onions will when they're ready. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, this is a wildflower patch. Um, this is both partially seeded and just disturbed soil that I've let do whatever it's going to do. So this was that first California poppy I showed y'all. That really thin kind of bluish colored um, foliage. But this is a cosmos, which is a little more bright green. They apparently flower at the end of the season, I guess. What is that? Oh, it's a feather. I saw this little brown thing over here. Um, yarrow up the yin yang, all this really pretty feathery, tight, we, tightly woven feathery stuff is yarrow. That's yarrow. Um, this I think is pokeweed, which is a native plant. Actually, there's a big one way over there. They produce the um, purple berries and the berries themselves are actually edible if you cook them but I don't ever bother because they just make a big mess. Um, this is fleabane. This is a very mature, these are very mature. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, it's so hot. <laughs> Brain is scrambling. Uh, lamb's quarters, very mature lamb's quarters. Um, this is a borage. That's a borage. Those are the ones I actually started way too early, just stuck outside. They survived, stuck them in the ground, and here they are. Um, a lot of this is actually grass because a lot of what I put in here, soil-wise, is just whatever I had from when I dug out the garden in the fall to make this garden in the fall. Um, so I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but this little teeny patch of flowers over here I think is probably a volunteer chamomile that actually moved, one of the Roman chamomiles. And there's a lot of stuff, I'm totally honest, I have no idea what it is. Like there's these cool things that I'm sure are native, something in the mint family, the uh, the stem is square, that kind of thing. More fleabane, just some grass. I thought there was a sunflower in here, where is it? I think that might be a sunflower. Um, and then 
that's right about it. The other California poppy is on this side. I have no idea what this pretty white stuff is. It's cute. Um, but here's a really mature borage. This whole thing is one plant. It's just going crazy as they do. Ooh, there's another flower in there. I don't know if I'll be able to grab it for you. Cosmos are getting big. There's the other California poppy. And here's that pretty purple, uh, pinky, pinky purpley flower. Actually, this might be another, this is another color poppy, I think, based on the foliage. So here's my chaos. I think next year I'll try to seed it a little bit better with true. Ooh, what is that? That was an interesting looking bug. Um, so that's all I got for now. I'm not gonna bring you all out front because that's just too far of a walk and it's too darn hot. So if you like this kind of stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get onions soon and get squashes and all that, all that good stuff. And I'll also show you updates of the garlic when it's ready. That's starting to cure and curing very quickly because it's been so screaming hot. And hopefully we'll get our potatoes real soon. So enjoy your really hot day.